So what's going on guys, my name's Ash and welcome to the first video on FIFA 22. We have just downloaded the early access EA play trial for FIFA 22 and in today's video guys I'm going to be showing you the best camera and controller settings to get you started in FIFA 22 because when many of you load up the game you're going to want the best start possible so hopefully these settings help you out and set you up for a great year. Uh, but before we get into the video guys I, I would really appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one it's going to be a great year for us uh, and also don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted uh, if I sound a little bit rushed it's because I'm trying not to waste all of my uh, time on EA Play and I'm trying to get this right first time so I don't waste any more of my time uh, but yeah we're going to get straight into the camera settings first because I find these to be uh, quite straightforward so the camera I suggest you guys use is telebroadcast now the reason I suggest telebroadcast is because it's quite a level camera and what I mean by that is if you take a look at like um, end to end for example that affects the way you actually play the game because when you're running you'd have to push the analog stick up opposed to right and it's similar with some of these cameras and if they're not completely level to run in a straight line you're actually gonna have to push the analog stick on an angle so the reason I like telebroadcast is because it's level and it seems to have the right zoom and height for you know everything that is necessary in the game such as playing long balls short balls and it helps you it really does help your gameplay I've noticed so make sure you are using telebroadcast if you're not sure which camera you like using and then I just have it on custom settings where I keep the height the same because I don't like it being too low as it actually blocks your view uh, of the whole of the whole pitch because for example if you have it too low uh, you know you can't actually see across the whole pitch but if you have it at 10 height you can see all the way across it so that's very nice and I just like to zoom it out just a tad to eight so that I can you know see more long balls and see more of what's going on and it doesn't zoom it out too much uh, I know some people like using the co-op camera for example because you know you can see pretty much everything but to me that's too zoomed out and it doesn't you know it doesn't go well for me so if you like a middle ground I definitely suggest using telebroadcast because it does feel the most comfortable for me uh, but yeah that is the camera settings guys let's move on to the controller settings the more important uh, settings in my opinion so the first thing you want to do is you see this competitive master switch you want to turn this on because if you read the description it says it to it's a toggle that tailors gameplay to the competitive configuration and it's mandatory in online game modes what this means is you have to use these settings in online game modes anyway it won't let you turn this off you have to use it and if you see what it does you can basically see that it locks in a lot of different settings so oh sorry if we turn this off look you can see all of these are on this is assisted but if we turn this off you know you don't get any assistance with it everything's manual uh, and it's definitely good if you turn this off even if you're playing offline because it helps you get used to all of the settings that you need to in order to compete online and play online game modes because no matter what you do you're gonna have to use this when you play online so make sure this is on uh, the FIFA trainer I don't know why that is uh, on that you want to turn that off unless you're really stuck obviously and you're not really sure what you're doing uh, definitely turn the trainer off because it can get in the way Okay guys, so next up we have timed finishing. Now this one is really down to personal preference. I'm sure you all know what timed finishing does now and it basically gives you the chance to improve the accuracy and power of your shots if you have it on but obviously there's a penalty if you time it too late or too early so it's up to you whether you trust yourself to use timed finishing or not. I have it on because I do like to, you know, uh, give myself the edge uh, and, and time my shot so I can potentially get a better shot off uh, but again that one is always down to you you can have it on or off it doesn't really matter it's whatever you prefer uh, next up we have the next player switch indicator and it says it enable enabling the next player switch indicator shows to which player you'll swap controls when pressing L1 while defending uh, I suppose you can have this on but I don't really use L1 when player switching because it's not the best way to defend uh, but if you guys do defend uh, and player switch with L1 you can have this on uh, I'm just going to leave it on anyway because if there is ever a time I want to use L1 to switch because you know the player's in the right position and the indicator showing that uh, I can just use L1 so I'm going to keep that on just to give myself further options when defending now pass block assistance this one's a no-brainer you want to have this on because basically this means all 
auto blocks you know you don't want to turn that off because you'll be handicapping yourself if you have it on it will automatically block uh, passes from players that you're not controlling and obviously the players that you are controlling so you definitely want to have that on as it will really help you uh, block passes and cut passing lanes and things like that so definitely have that one on guys now auto switching again this one's a bit of a preference if you're very bad at auto switching and you're not very good at it at the start i suppose you could use automatic but i have i would avoid doing that now the reason i'd avoid doing that is because auto switching is terrible uh the auto the automatic switching doesn't help you out it'll switch to the wrong player many times uh, and it's just not something you want to use because you can't defend you can't defend manually very well and it will hold you back when you're trying to get better at the game so the two options i suggest using are either only on air balls or on air balls and loose balls now the reason i say uh, air balls is because it can be very difficult to switch uh, to a player when there's a ball up in the air because you have to react very quickly so this is the one time I think an automatic player switch is good because it's never usually wrong and it is very consistent so it's definitely useful to have air balls on uh, and if you want you can have loose balls on as well but the uh, again, this one's down to preference. I don't really know which one I'm going to use, but I'm going to leave it on air balls and loose balls because I don't always trust myself to uh, switch to the correct player in time when there's a loose ball. And obviously, if there is a loose ball and it switches to the player close to it, you can obviously snatch that back. So I'm going to use on air balls and loose balls, but it's up to you. I either suggest using on air balls and loose balls or just on air balls. Okay, now auto switch and move assistance. Now, <clears throat> this one is down to preference as well, but I like to have this on none or low I don't suggest you have this on high because what this does is when you switch to a player uh, If you have uh, if you have high move assistance on what this does is it increases the time that the player will continue running in the way that they were before you switch to them so let's say your defenders running back you're not controlling your defender and you switch to the defender they're gonna carry on running uh, for a short time before you before you can actually control them and turn them in the way that you want so if you have this on low or none the moment you switch to this player, you have complete control over the player and obviously there's no like delay uh, and you can run in w whichever way you want really so I have this on none because the moment I switch to my player I like to have control of them now clearance assistance there is two settings for this there is classic and directional let's look at the two right now uh, if you have it on classic it says clearance direction and power are fully assisted and do not take into consideration user directional input so basically it'll do it automatically it'll do whatever the game thinks is best and we know what FIFA's like that's not always the best thing uh, in the world so if you have this on direction it says it takes into consideration the direction of the user input so basically it will assist the power uh, and obviously hoof it away but whichever direction you choose it will take that into consideration and you can have a more controlled clearance so I suggest having this on directional now moving on to player lock this is basically that thing where if you click both of the analog sticks in you can move a player around uh, who doesn't have the ball obviously and then it will play the ball to them a bit like pro clubs uh, it's, use it's, it's useful to just keep this on because you know there's not really a time where you click in L uh, the left stick and the right stick at the same time unless you want to do that so it's useful to have this on in case you want the option but don't worry about it too much uh, I'll just keep that on. Now icon switching, you want this on because when you press R3 in it will show you, it will give you like options on which player to switch to, you'll see it above their head so if you want a new way of player switching it's very useful to have this I definitely think so I would keep this on, you don't have to use it if you don't want to but I suggest using it in, in case you want to. Now, right stick switching, you can either use ball relative or player relative. I don't suggest the other two, um, and the reason for this is because I think these two are the most consistent ways of doing it. Uh, some people like ball relative because it's basically saying the ball will act as the center point of reference, so wherever the ball is, that'll, that'll affect uh, which direction you have to push the analog stick to switch to a player because obviously wherever the ball is that that's the center point of reference so it's based on the ball positioning uh, whereas player relative it, it acts as like the player that you're controlling acts as the center point of reference so whoever's around me whichever position they're in I have to I have to move the right stick in the direction that they are away from the player that I'm controlling so I use player relative because that's something I've always used I know it sounds a little bit confusing but 
but if you're stuck I would suggest using player relative as it is easier I think but again that's all down to personal preference either use ball relative or player relative uh, now ground pass assistance you want this on assisted because obviously that means it will help you out you want the same for shot assistance because you don't want to handicap yourself for no reason cross assistance this is the one i'd actually rather have it on semi now the reason for this is because the direction and power will only have a little bit of assistance and it will depend more on where you actually point uh, the analog stick and where and how much you hold the cross button so basically it gives you less assistance uh, on cross direction and power but it still helps you out a little bit this helps for this helps for crossing because obviously if you have it on fully assisted you don't have a lot of control so it might cross it to the wrong player whereas if you have it on semi you have more chance of getting it to the player that you want to now lob pass assistance I suggest just keeping this on because again it will help you out um, and yeah that, that that's pretty self-explanatory save assistance that doesn't really matter either because obviously you're not really using a goalkeeper are you uh, and then lastly we have oh well, not lastly we have analog sprint now the reason you want analog sprint off is because basically what analog sprint does is when you hold the sprint button uh, it basically takes into consideration the amount of weight you put on the button so if you only hold it a little bit your player won't run at full speed whereas if you hold it all the way down he will run at full speed now this sounds great in theory but there are many times where you might not actually hold the sprint button down uh, completely so your player will actually be running slower than they can so I suggest having this off so you avoid all sort of confusion and you don't need to you know put all your weight on the sprint button uh, that's what I'm saying now lastly we have pass receiver lock uh, and if you have it on late it says the pass receiver is locked as late as possible close to the time when the ball is kicked this is the default setting uh, and this and early says the pass receiver is locked early at the time when the kicking animation begins so I like to just keep this on late because it gives you more time to change it and uh, you know like if if the situation changes it doesn't it doesn't lock it doesn't lock the player too early so just keep this on late this is a bit of a confusing setting but it doesn't really matter in my opinion uh, but yeah that is all of the settings that I suggest you guys use uh, and if this has helped you out if you are going to use this make sure you do drop this video a thumbs up as it does massively help me out also subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted and with all that aside guys I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll catch you all later peace